Hey everyone, welcome to the UVD Weekly Wrap-Up, the show where the team from UrbanVinylDaily.com goes over everything there is to know in the designer toy, art, street art, and Sofobi world. I'm your host, Travis Likens. And I'm Ben Pierce. And we're here for episode number 22, which we have called... Designer Con Hangover. So we are back in the studio. If you haven't noticed, we haven't been in the studio in a while because we've been out on the road doing things like an interview with Mike Giant. And uh, lots of designer con stuff. So, so far we've released a designer con kind of a montage, if you will, uh, kind of a walkthrough, um, some awesome stuff we saw at the show. And we've also released an interview with the creator of designer con, Ben Groteski. Goretzky. Goretzky. There we go. <laughs> we also did an interview while we were at Corey Helford Gallery with Liz McGrath. Yes. And we've released an interview with Crayola. But... We have a ton more interviews coming your way that'll be released in the next week or so um, as we get them all edited and, you know, all the cool little pictures and whatnot that we in insert in our videos. So look for those to be coming in the next week or so. But we wanted to sit down and take a little bit to tell you about our experience at DesignerCon 2016. So, Ben, what'd you think? I thought it was really good. It was super packed both days as compared to tumbleweeds on Sundays. <laughs> yes it was very packed uh this year we did have to like as we're walking around kind of uh we weasel our way through the uh show normally it's or you uh, could say that we we had to weave i don't i don't really want to be considered a weasel but okay so we had to weave in and out of traffic as we were going through the show um you know not always on the second day was that a thing and we ran into that in both uh hall a b and c um i've heard i guess there was like a migration so in the morning, it was kind of slow in the new hall, which is Hall C. But um, when we were over there, it did seem busy and people were, yep. you know, over there checking everything out. So um, it wasn't quite like a couple of years ago when they opened up the other halls, hall, the second hall, um, where people were kind of like lost, I guess. They thought the whole convention was in one hall, but then they discovered halfway through the show that there was a second part. <laughs> it was like a horde of walkers. Yeah. So, um, you know, but. Everything's working out. Seems to be going well for them adding that third hall. So um, as we understood from our interview with uh, Ben, um, they will be continuing the third hall next year as uh, as planned. Uh, but no, not adding a fourth hall, and it didn't sound like a Friday. So, um, yeah. But to learn more about all that kind of stuff, check out our interview with uh, Ben from DesignerCon. Um, as far as um, for us, we had a really good show. Um, we walked our new retail exclusive Luna the around blue, the blue version, uh, the blue version, which we are now showing you a photo of, uh, around with us to the different retailers and uh, explain to them the process for getting those and, uh, how many are available and everything like that. But since we haven't done an official announcement on the blog, we'll do it through this video. The retail exclusive version of Luna will be the blue edition, but fear not kickstarters. You are getting yours first before retailers get theirs. Yes. So um, the figure itself will be limited to 200 pieces and, um, you know, features the two different two color way of blue and it has the antlers just like all the Lunas will um, and lanterns and all that kind of stuff. But the figure will be $60 and available at your favorite designer toy store, uh, hopefully starting in December. So depending, and if they don't have it, you can request it. Yeah, so send them an email, say you're looking to grab a Luna uh, figure for your collection and tell them that when uh, the distributor email comes out that they'll need to reserve one of those. Um, and so you contact your favorite retailer to get one of those. Uh, we're not going to uh, plug any specific one, but just ask your retailers to get it. That would help us out a lot. It would help the bots out a lot. And it would help your retailer out a lot because you can grab it and help support those guys that are working so hard to bring us designer toys. And speaking of retailers, we have a couple sponsors. Yes. So we have, first up, Strange Cat Toys. Galleria. Martian Toys. And Rotofuki. And we'd like to thank all of those guys for uh, you know jumping on and supporting us. But if you happen to be someone out there that is not currently a sponsor and would like to be, just shoot us an email to urbanvinyldaily at gmail.com. And we will get you set up with the uh, rates and all that kind of stuff so we can add your name to our great list of sponsors. Um, but we have a new beer feature this week. It's actually a collaboration between local brewery Rheingeist, which is from Cincinnati, and Sun King Brewery, brewery from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, this one is called, what's it called, Ben? 
It's the hundred shilling Scottish style ale, and it's a uh, pretty strong. Gotta it's, say, seven uh, <laughs> percent. Not as far as like the the alcohol, but like the the flavor. It's someone a, someone was very heavy handed with my can. When I popped it, it was already like completely full. But as you can see, we are enjoying it in our Urban Vinyl Daily koozies, which if you saw us at DesignerCon, we were handing out. Um, if you didn't catch us at DesignerCon and you would like to get one, you can head over to our our website, UrbanVinylDaily.com, click on our store, and there will be a um, link to buy the koozie. Uh, it will include uh, free shipping within the U.S., and it'll be like 3 bucks. So, Will we have pins available as well? Uh well, the pens, yes, we will have Luna pens. Uh, the green edition of Luna that was available at DesignerCon for $10 each will be available on our site. Uh, hopefully, um, we're, we'll shoot for next Monday, like Cyber Monday. And um, we will uh, do for $10, and uh, you can get it shipped anywhere in the world. That'll help us out. It'll help the bots out as well. Uh, if you were looking for the pens that were uh, we created with um, Jay Fury, you will be able to grab those on Jay Fury's website uh, later in the week. And um, there'll be 10 bucks each. And there's the gray edition of The Lost Soldier, the blue edition of The Lost Soldier, and the blue edition of Flutter. So uh, all of those are 1.25 inch enamel pins and turned out really good. We're really happy with them. Uh, they did really well at the show. And we're hoping that fans that couldn't get one, uh, many of you have contacted us already. So we're hoping we can get you to support us and support Justin in his uh, you know, artwork. So. But as for designer con news, I think that's a we gave a pretty good coverage of yeah. what we were trying to do. Um, so I guess be on the lookout for both our inter like interviews, the wrap up, and booth visits that we did. So mm. that that'll kind of good call hodgepodge and kind of cover most of the bases. We obviously did not get to all of the booths when there are. A hundred plus vendors. Otherwise, you'd be reading for months, and I'd be posting for years on <laughs> visiting every booth. But here's Ben in February. Yeah. Designer Con post number seven hundred. <laughs> so, if we didn't make it to your booth or didn't um, cover your booth, we're sorry. Maybe next year, but yep. In in the interest of time, and I guess your time, our time, and the reader's time, we we're not able to cover every booth. Yeah. So we got, we got a little hate mail already on, on Twitter about this earlier today. Um, somebody saying that, uh, UVD went to a designer con for two days and all I got was a five minute video. Um, yeah, <laughs> we got more stuff coming though. It, it's just, there's a lot to cover and, uh, we a lot tried to, to edit too. Yeah. There's a lot to edit. So I'm still editing videos. I have about five of the 15 or so videos that we, we put together, um, done, they are slowly going to release over the next week or so. We don't want to bombard the internet with like 15 videos all at once. That doesn't do anybody any good. So it's coming. Don't get crazy. Don't post crazy stuff on our Twitter or our Facebook or Instagram. We are working it. So, And a lot of you guys don't realize there's a lot of time that's just wasted trying to load these videos to the internet. Um, it takes about, for a five to 10 minute video, it takes about, an hour or so to load that to the internet. Um, unless you have the internet that we had where we were staying, which seemed to get those done in about five minutes. So I don't know what kind of internet he has, but it's ridiculously fast and maybe I should look into it. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, we wanted to go over the things that we ourselves grabbed at designer con or were given to us or somehow ended up in our possession. We did so not steal. So, don't infer that we stole anything. <laughs> Don't infer that. So, uh, Ben, if you want to start out, I think you have the first thing that you bought at DesignerCon uh, with you, so we can talk about that first. So, the first thing I bought ends up being a Mario Bobum. It was from the Zebulon booth in Hall C. So, it's a resin piece with a, uh, I guess, a kerosene wick of sorts glued, and has the little key in the back. doesn't come out, but it's about, I'd say, two Two and a half inches tall. I'd say it's about three. Because this is this is three. So. Uh, so yeah, about two and a half, three. Two and three quarters inches. So <laughs> big Mario fan. So picked it up. It was cheap enough. So I thought it was pretty cool and it was pretty well done. So it's um I guess across that run there it's like a color change paint on top of it. So under different lights it looks more purple than blue and black than purple in some lights, but I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, so uh looks like a really cool piece. To, uh, do you remember how much it was? Um, I think it was thirty dollars. That's fair for that size of a figure and being painted and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'd say you did good on that one. Uh, next up, 
I have this one. It's within reach, so I'll show it right now. I picked up the uh, Suck Lords bootleg version of Hulk, uh, disguised as the uh, Jolly Green Giant. Um, I've always been a Hulk guy, and I've always wanted to own a Suck Lord piece that he actually created. I have a couple of things, but they're the uh, production style Suck Lord stuff. Uh, it has a cool like rendition of all the different uh, Green Giants that came along, and he did them obviously rather funnily. Uh, we'll show some close-up photos of it, um, but a lot of fun. It was like uh, it were, they were seventy-five dollars. Um, if you were at the show, this is an edition of nine. And this is a particular one is number three, so uh, turned out really good. Like uh, the joke, because the Hulk is basically the Green Giant, except he's not jolly at all. So there's the ironic part. I Depends guess. Depends if he's with Black Widow or not. <laughs> he might be jolly if he's with Black Widow. Yeah, uh, it's really good though. Card by Sidekick. Lots of lots of good stuff. So. Next up, Ben. Um, at Ritzy and Kano's booth, I picked up one of Ritzy's dish towels for my wife. Yeah, dish towels. It was a, uh, a salt and pepper and says salt and pepper's here. So. Salt and pepper's here. <laughs> exactly. So it's cool enough and it'll get the dishes done. It'll, it'll, or it'll just dry your hands. <laughs> or dry my hands. One of the two. So uh, next up, picked up the tofu edition of Bozu. Uh, which is a Planet 3 toy and Lulu, Lulu Bell collab. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a soft vinyl figure. Um, it has no plug or anything on the bottom. So it's just like an open, like a, it's almost like a giant finger puppet and um, has a little, t- uh, little twine piece with a tag with some uh, Japanese writing on it and uh, features a lot of really cool uh, sculpting work. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of detail on the head. The body is kind of in a robe. So the details are fairly vague on that, but it's a it's a good little figure. Um, you've seen some custom versions of this so far. Uh, this one is blank white, so it's not got any color or anything like that. And there was a custom edition available at uh, Designer Con as well. Um, but you can get a lot of that stuff on Lulu Bell's website if it hasn't sold out yet. They have released their additional items and made them available. So if you're looking for one of these, go over to lulubell.com and uh, uh, lulubelltoys.com and uh, grab one before they are sold out. They were only 25 bucks, so I imagine they're going to go fairly quickly. So uh, when I stopped by the Dark Hall Mansion booth, which we cover frequently on the site, they do prints and everything, I picked up a Snoopy print, which was not announced via their um, newsletters, or and it's pretty much hot off the presses when I got it. It had just been delivered that day, but from Eric Robeson, and even though they're supposed to be numbered, the ones that they sold on Saturday are unnumbered since they had just gotten them and had not had a chance to really do anything with them. So I guess this makes it a little bit more limited of however many were made of it since they're unnumbered and unsigned. Sweet. So uh, next up, I uh, waited in line at the Paul Kaiju raffle, and I was one of the lucky people that got called and then got to spend my money subsequently. (laughs) So uh, the one I got was the uh, green edition of the Mock Bat uh, re- really cool piece. Lots of, uh, lots of detail. I actually was, um, telling Ben, I was torn when I got up there because I had went up there thinking I was going to buy the hyper Kraken, which included the two different head sculpts and the new body that goes along with it. And, um, I got up there and I, I just couldn't pass this green up. The green was too good. I'm a green guy. That's why I like Hulk mm-hmm. and, uh, could not pass up the green on this. Uh, I was one fifty, and it came with the two little additional, figures that go along with it that just kind of stand next to it. But uh, this was the main focus of what I wanted. So that's why I showed this off. Uh, Really happy with it. Great purchase. Um, If you're a fan of the soft final stuff and you don't know who Paul Kaiju is, then you're not really a fan. But uh, (laughs) so, uh, you know, pretty cool. Pretty happy with it. Luckily, I was able to grab it. So something I had uh, kind of Travis roped into on Saturday (laughs) was picking up a couple of these since I had uh, people I was helping out, but I bought two for myself. So this is, I guess, we covered previously that there were two editions that were announced prior to Decon, which was the regular and the debris. There were two secret editions. One of them was the Kaiju, which I'll sh- or Reptilian, I'll show you the one that I bought. And then there was a Glow-in-the-Dark, which I did not keep. But these are about eight or nine inches. Uh, the Kaiju was... $150, and even though it was a total edition of 20 it was split across three colors, so that makes each of those three colors the blue, 
the purple and the green micro run. So it was seven of the blue, seven of the green, and six of the purple. Wow. <laughs> so this is the blue one. Super cool kaiju which um, in our interview, you'll find out um, who did the painting for him. So I'm not going to spoil anything. Yeah. And uh, this is a really cool figure. It was uh, sculpted by a kiln over at... Uh, um, at uh, Big, Big Shot. Shot. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, just drew a blank. And he did a really good job on the figure, uh, translating it really well. And uh, it really does kind of like answer, you know, a lot of the, the way people feel about certain political aspects yeah. of our country right now. Uh, the figure stands really well. It's got good shape to it. I really like this kaiju style paint job, but the original is just a striking. Um, which, is, which is why I held on to it. Yep. So on the back, the little microchip is actually like pretty coolly uh, painted on the back. Yep. And so the regulars, an addition of 500. So hopefully everyone's able to get one. The glow in the dark was an addition of uh, 100. Yeah. And yep. the debris was an addition of 20. Yeah. So those are the four additions that were released at DesignerCon. And also part of the interview was a mention of the next colorway and when to expect it. Yeah. So it's a it's a really cool figure. Um, how much were these again? This was 60. The glow in the dark was 80. And both the debris and the kaiju were 150. Yeah, which is not bad for a hand painted figure, um, and that's a really good price for the the base. I mean, 60 mm -hmm. is 60 is a very 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 fair price for um, something like this. Um, I'm happy for you. I kind of wish I would have got one, but yeah, yeah, you can't have them all. Yeah, you can't have them all. I actually had all three colors at one time before I shipped out the other two <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, to the guys that are good things and just so nobody confuses apparently we caused a bunch of a stir at that uh, jermaine rogers booth we are not flippers these people paid not a dime more than the figure cost and these people also covered their shipping that's all they mm -hmm. did and uh, ben does not charge anybody to be you know getting this stuff for him yep. so uh <laughs> we apparently caused a lot of stink at the jermaine rogers booth people thought we were like just flipping this stuff but that is not what happened so uh next up though I have a cool item that was actually given to me, which happens from time to time. <laughs> so uh, if you'll move that there. Angel Wants has a new version of his Charlie the Angry Elephant pillow. Um, if you may remember, last year he released hand-done ones that were hand-sewn and hand-drawn. So like the elephant was drawn on the pillow. Um, this year he stepped it up a little bit, I got to say. He uh, got this all like embroidered and uh, done, you know, really nicely and everything was sewn really nicely. And uh, these were available at his booth and he was deb debuting them there. Um, but they are now available on his site. So if you want to hand over to Angel Wants' site and grab one of these for your collection, you can totally do that. They look great on like a, um, you know, a couch or a bed or wherever you want to put them. Uh, they're a lot of fun. And uh, it's a good way to support an artist without having to buy like a, a painting or if you don't have any room for toys, this is a great little thing to add to your you know, decor of your house or like a kid's room. I think it'd be really cute in like a little kid's room, you know? Um, I don't know. Grab it. There are not going to be many of them left because he sold a lot of them at DesignerCon. So what else you got, Ben? So what else I got was uh, stuff that I didn't buy, but uh, with Horrible Adorables, we kind of traded pins. So this was one of the pins that was at the Horrible Adorables booth. So we'll show a better picture of it. <laughs> and at the Wonder Goblin booth, Travis and I both were given uh, these little creatures. Like uh, little resin, like slug looking things. So mine is glow in the dark and Travis is color change. Yeah. So add it, either put it in your armpit or somewhere or put it in cold water and it'll change colors. Yeah. So and uh, they both were back blacklight reactive too, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so thanks Wonder Goblin for grabbing those. We'll have an interview with Wonder Goblin um, later on as soon as we get done editing all these videos. Uh, the, the other thing that I bought actually came from um, somebody that I have an original piece from, which I learned this weekend is pretty rare. Most people don't have those apparently because he doesn't do them very often. Uh, he does, but uh, Mis Nopales, I did my best there. My girlfriend was coaching me, <laughs> um, does like pop culture inspired uh, stickers a lot of times and shirts and other things and usually what they are are like um, sugar skull versions of your favorite characters so like i have a yoda a princess leia uh, han solo you know uh, stormtrooper pikachu uh, chewbacca 
Don Corleone, Wolverine, Logan, <laughs> or Logan, uh, a little mariachi guy, and a chick drinking wine. So uh, he does a lot of these on Kickstarter, actually, um, and funds different ones per month. Uh, every month he does a Kickstarter. So um, if you're a fan of like Sugar Skull stuff and pop culture and mashing that together, he's a great source for that kind of material. And uh, at the con, he was actually running a deal where if you bought 10 of them, it was $10. So you can't really beat that for stickers. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, Jenny's a big fan of uh, his uh, his work, I decided to grab 10 of them. And I got a couple for myself <laughs> while I was doing it. So uh, it's really cool um, little stickers and really something that you could have got at the con that was ra rather cheap. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people go into Designer Con and they pay the $10 to get in. And they have no clue what any of this stuff is. So, um, you know, they go by and they see some $300 piece sitting on a, on a table. And they're like, holy crap, I can't afford that. I wouldn't pay that for that. But uh, it's nice to find people like this at the con that have very uh, affordable items for those people that uh, may not. They may want to support this, but they don't want to spend three or $400 on something. Or the multiple places that had pins. Yeah. Or blind boxes. All those things are good for the, the customer that's. You know, doesn't really know anything about it, but wants to kind of help and support. Um, as far as stuff, I think that's it. Yeah, I didn't pick up a whole lot. Yeah, that's all I got. Considering my entire luggage was filled with the <laughs> with the stuff you were bringing back for with, other people. Yeah, the veil figures. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, we had a lot of fun this year. Um, I felt like it was a really good show for us personally. I think uh, a lot of vendors seem to have a favorable opinion on the show. Uh, we did a lot of good networking. We saw a lot of people we don't see all the time, so it's really good to see those people. Um, if you haven't been to DesignerCon, uh, we highly suggest checking out DesignerCon next year. Uh, it takes place November 11th and 12th, um, 2017. So Veterans Day weekend. Yeah, so Veterans Day weekend. So if you happen to be from a, a distance that and you get off on Veterans Day, then uh, you probably would uh, you know, have an extra day there, a yep. uh, free day. Um, but it's a lot of fun, and there's a lot of stuff to check out, and it's a great gathering of people that all do things uh, related to what we, you know, we love and support. So, I mean, I can't plug it enough. It's it's a really good event for everybody that goes. Oh, I forgot, I got my badge. So yeah, we don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> so yeah, they they had some different artwork on it. This one has a um, Edward scissor hands, and the other one has a Terminator on it. Um, as they pointed out at the show, everybody already has a piece of collectible art if you have a badge when you get there. <laughs> so uh, it's a it's a good show. You can't can't say enough about it. Um, it's it was ten dollars to get in, so I mean, really, you can't beat that. I mean, that's all we can say. If you want to check it out, head over to designercon.com. Uh, you can find out all the information for next year's show, including things like vendors and everything else that's going to be going on at the show, like panels and whatnot. And um, that's where you'll find everything you need to know. Uh, you can also follow them on the, um, Instagram at DesignerCon. Uh, they'll keep you updated with like updates of like um, big information that's going to be going on with the show and when you can find things like uh, if you want to be a vendor, uh, booth release dates, um, if you want to uh, get a ticket, ticket release dates, those kind of things. Um, but it kind of wraps up what we want to talk about this week. Um, one piece of news I'll squeak in here since uh -oh. we're done with uh, <laughs> DesignerCon. Is that the open edition figures of the Ka, like the Ka's open edition figures from the Museum of Modern Art, are already sold out? Are no, they're they're still up on their website. No, they're gone again. They're gone again. Damn it! <laughs> I, I was gonna plug the fact that they had them up, and the fact that you get forty dollars off of your yeah, order. They're they're already sold out again. So well, they were back ordered, but it looked like people were able to place their orders yeah, and, and have them filled. And now they say not available. Well, never mind then. <laughs> never mind then. I try to help people out that actually watch the show, and now they're gone. Yep, they're gone. So if you want that figure, there's still a chase, chase for it. If you happen to be international, I do know that Metacom was taking pre-orders for them. Um, you can head over to metacom.jp or whatever their website is these days, and uh, you can probably pre-order them there if you happen to be international. Um, other than that, this kind of wraps up the show for this week. Uh, be on the lookout for your favorite brands to be releasing their designer con leftovers. We've seen stuff from Lulu Bell, Broke Piggy, Silent Stage, Silent Stage. Um, Justin J. Fury Phillips has his stuff going up. Uh, plenty of other people that are you know loading their stuff. We're going to miss all of them, so we shouldn't even mention any. But Toy Art Gallery is another one. Um, we've seen people going up left and right. So make sure to check out your favorite. Uh, brand yeah. or something you were looking for, look for their Instagram to see their announcement of when things are going up. Yeah. So 
for those who didn't get one of the veils, I think Jermaine held back maybe one of each of the kaijus and a couple of the other ones. So be prepared to fight if you didn't get one of them. Yeah, so but that kind of wraps up the show. If you want to keep up with our weekend releases and whatnot uh, for next week, make sure to follow us on UrbanVinylDaily.com. We'll announce when we um, put up the pins and uh, the koozies and everything. Um, you can also keep up with us with us on Instagram at Urban Vinyl Daily. The same on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Urban Vinyl Daily. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Urban Vinyl Daily. You'll get all the interviews that are still coming. Uh, so don't get mad at us. They're still working. Um, you can also check us out on iTunes. iTunes, look for Token Nerd Network. Um, anything closing? I think we're good. Uh, Thank you, everyone, who uh, gave us positive words of encouragement, who took the time to interview with us, even though we were on your time and we were just kind of there trying to help everyone out so that we could bring you to the forefront, since it helps everyone to see your face and hear your voice instead of just reading your words and looking at your pictures online. Sweet. No, really, thanks, guys. <laughs> no, Ditto. Really. That was awesome. Ditto. And uh, But as always, I'm Travis. And I'm Ben. Have a great day. Designer Toy Day. Hey everyone, this is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right, Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that, you can get 10% off your next order at tenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our token nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at token underscore nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways.